G'day and welcome to Mr. Craftsmith. I'm Darren and this is a two-part video series. So in part one, we're going to run through the process of designing our own waste board directly in Lightburn. Now, many of us probably have, and I've downloaded a uh, waste board grid, and I got that from LA Hobby Guy, who does an amazing job with all of his uh, video tutorials. But I, th I thought, okay, well, let's just break it down. I thought, well, I better understand the process so I can do it myself. And it would actually help with uh, just understanding Lightburn a little bit better and how we might be able to use that in other projects. So let's get straight into it. So here I am in Lightburn. Now, I'm using the Autour Laser Master 3 and it has a 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter workspace. So uh, the waste board that I'm going to create, I want to put labels on it as well to with the measurements. And uh, so I'm going to need to leave some space around the outside so I can print uh, or engrave those as well. So this waste board is going to be 380 millimeters by 380 millimeters. So the first thing, uh, before we sort of jump into that one, I just want to go into the light burn settings. And uh, just for the purpose of this example, I've had the uh, grid snap distance. I've increased that to 10 millimeters, just so that uh, it just makes it easier for us to uh, make our lines. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw my vertical lines. So I'm going to be starting here at 10 millimeters or 10 millimeters and 10 millimeters. And we're gonna create, we're gonna replicate this grid essentially. So first thing I'm gonna do is grab my pencil tool. Now, if I hold down control, that will activate the snapping. So even if I'm in the middle of this, say around about that sort of 15 millimeter mark, it still snaps it to the next one. So that's where it just makes things a whole lot easier. Okay, so um, I'm going to be round about where that 10 millimeters is. I'm just going to hold down control. I'm going to click once with uh, the left mouse button. I'm just going to drag that down. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click again. Now to get rid of this line, because I don't want to continue this line, it's just a right click on the mouse and that gets rid of it. So now you can see here, if we look at this object here, it's at position 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters and its height is 380 millimeters. So that's exactly what I want. So rather than just duplicate this and then snap them to the grid, there's a much easier way. And uh, that's using the array tool. So which is this square grid over here. So I'm gonna create a, an array of the selected objects. Just gonna click on that one. And the X spacing is gonna be 10 millimeters because they're gonna be 10 millimeters apart. And all I gotta do is just increase these. And you can see just by clicking on that mouse, I can put the number in if I want, but I can just go all the way across the board right up to replicate the amount of lines that I want to produce. So that's what we've got there. I've got um, 39 uh, instances of that line. Click OK. And now we've created the um, vertical lines. And uh, you can follow that same process, if you like, to create the horizontal lines. You could draw a horizontal line, uh, but there's a much faster way. So if I just, if I just uh, copy those ones, and control D for duplicate. I'm working on a PC. And then I'm just going to rotate these ones until I get that one. And if I hold down my shift, it'll do it in increments. And I can just rotate 90 degrees. And all of a sudden, I've got my grid. Nice, super simple. So we're going to add a couple of extra things to this one, which um, I've, I have in the design that I downloaded. And the first thing is these uh, diagonal lines, because it helps... Uh, give you some perspective of the measurements. So again, I'm just going to click on my pen tool. And if I hover around this corner here and hold down my control, I can get that corner. And I'm going to go right to the other corner there and then right click and that gets rid of that one. I'm going to do the same here and drag that down, holding down my control and click again and then we've got our exact center there, which is going to be at 200 and 200. So that's perfect. That's um, all I'm actually, no, let's add a couple of other things there because I do the odd coaster here and there. So, um, and I've got some round coasters. So let's say we wanted to put a hundred millimeter circle dead smack in the center of our waste board. Um, easy enough to do. I'm just going to select the circle tool. I'm going to hold down shift so as it makes it a circle. I'm going to make that 100 millimeters. So now, which is about four inches, which is generally about the size of a, um, a round coaster or slate coasters that I tend to do. 
And to easily get that into the center, I'm just going to select on the center on page. And I've got that one there. Now, if you if you happen to do something bigger, I'll just zoom in a little bit there. Maybe you do something a little bit bigger than that as well. Say that it was a 8 inch or 200 millimeter uh, circle. Easy enough to do, just add a offset that to that one. And I'm offsetting the distance 50 mils because that's on a radius basis. So if we double that, that makes it um, um, an extra 100 mils across, which will make it 200. Okay. So there we have the grid pattern that we're going to um, uh, engrave on our waste board. And you can see that was just a matter of minutes to actually do that one. Now, the next thing I had to sort of think about this one for a little bit, because how are we going to get the labels on? It seemed rather laborious for me to go in here and uh, put some text on here. And let's say we want that one. This is going to be 10 millimeters. Um, now, before we do that, let's just chuck that on a fill line. Um, so there's our fill there. And then have to replicate that and put all the numbers in across. I thought, well, that just seems um, a little bit too labor intensive for me. So there must be a faster way to do it. And so I did a bit of research and there actually is a much faster way to do that one. And we're using a, a merge CSV function within Lightburn that can easily uh, produce a series of numbers uh, very, very easily. So let's jump into that one. So what I need to do is I need to create a CSV file and I need to create my numbers across here. So I'm going to go from 10 all the way across to uh, 390. So that gives us the, the full extent of our uh, labeling that we require there. So let's jump into Excel. Most of us have a basic understanding of Excel and this is just a really simple example of how we can create these labels. So you're going to start at 10 and 20 and now I could keep going down and just putting in 30, 40, 50, 60, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But in Excel there's a much quicker way to do that one. If I highlight those, that now recognizes that as a series and if I just drag that down, you can see that the numbers are increasing. And if I just keep dragging down, I want to go all the way to 390 and it just completes that sequence for me so it just saves time. We're going to save this file as a CSV file. So if we jump there, I'm just going to pop this into the light burn and I'm going to change it from an Excel workbook to a CSV which is a comma delimited and we're just going to call this one waste board. Okie doke. So we've created our CSV, so let's jump back into Lightburn and have a look at the process for doing this one. So there's a function in here called variable text. Okay, so this is the uh, variable text box. If, it, if it's not showing up there, you just jump under window and come down here and click on variable text and that'll have it there. I never even knew it existed before today. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in that CSV file. So I'm going to browse that one and bring in my waste board. Okay, so what we've got there is that CSV file with that number series in there. And uh, so what I need to do, if, if I click on that one, where um, the first thing we need to do is change it to a merge CSV. So it was sitting on normal, but we're going to change that to merge CSV. And what I need to do is I just need to grab my text tool and do percent, uh, which is the column. I think it's the interpretation of the column. And I'm going to do the zero because in... In, in the numbering format, it starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc, etc. So we're going to grab that one and I just want to line that one up on the center. It's around about there, so that's good. And what I'm going to do, we now need to replicate this across the board. So the easiest way to do that one is using our array tool, just like we did with the lines. I've got the spacing set a little bit closer, so if I put in 39, because we had 39 measurements, you can see how that's contained within the grid, and I'm happy just to do that uh, for the time being. I'll show you how we fix that once we've got the numbers in there. Okay, so let's highlight all of those numbers there. And over in our variable text field, what we have there is we're going to start at zero, which is the first one here. 
uh, let's start at zero, ends at 38 and advancing by one. If we do a test there, you can see as I hold down that test, let's just jump in a little bit closer and hold the test. You can see it's just adding all those numbers that we've got in that CSV file. How cool is that? So what we're going to do is I've tested it, so I'm okay with that one. So to convert those, I'm just going to bake those numbers in and we can see that now now that has converted those um, values into the, the values that we had in the CSV file. With this 390, I'm now going to just hold down my shift and move it over to the middle there. A little bit more, round about there. <clears throat> now that I've got the, the middle set on the first one, and the middle set on the last one. I just now need to highlight all of those again. And under my alignment tool here, I'm just going to um, distribute the horizontal centers on those. So you can see now that that's automatically put those directly over the line as we want them to. And I'm gonna group those now. So I've got those as one group and I'm just gonna move those down to the bottom. So if we have a look at that one, we're just going to move those down to the bottom. Whoop. Overshot the mark there a little bit. And if we hold down control, I've just set my increments as a lot smaller movements so that we can just line those up on the board. So now we've got our horizontals in place. The next thing is we need to get our labels in on the side. That's what would normally be. So it's going to start at 20, but we're going to use the same numbers again to uh, get our numbering correct. So like we did before, we're going to put the percentage to indicate the column that we're going to be using, and it's just going to be zero, which is that first column. All right, so we've got that one. We're going to do the array tool, and we're going to add uh, Y rows this time. Let's have a look. So we need, do we need 39? Probably don't, probably one less. So let's go 38. Okay. And we're going to start, so rather than start at zero, which would have been 10, I'm just going to increase that to start at, at one, which should correspond to 20. So if we have a look at that one, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't change those to merge CSV. So it only works if you uh, change the font type to merge CSV. Now, if we test, we can see there that that does, uh, oh, it's starting at zero. Oh, sorry, I have to change the current to 1. And we test that one. That starts at 20, goes up to 390. Okay, cool. So I'm going to bake those ones in. Now, looking at this one, we're just going to grab my 390. And we're going to move that one up. So it's moving it up 10, 10 millimeters each time. So that will be my 390 mark there. And I'm just going to move it up slightly higher. So it's pretty much centered on that line. And just like we did before, so I'm going uh, left to right this time just to highlight all those. And this time, rather than horizontal centers, we're going to do the vertical centers, which is of distribute them along those lines. So let's have a look at that one. Just make sure that's all right. So it's 10 and that's going to be 20. Perfect. We jump up to the top and we're on 390. So that's exactly what we want there. So we're going to group those again, we're going to duplicate, and we're just going to move those over to the other side. And if we have a look at that one, perfect. Now, in this instance, because that's 390, 390, I can get rid of that one. So I'm just going to grab this group. I'm just going to temporarily ungroup them and get rid of that one, because we know that's 390. And now I'm just going to group those again. A little bit tricky to see, but we've done that before. So if I just bring that to maximize the screen. So now we have a complete waste board and uh, it's got the full grid on it. It's going to do those lines. We've got our uh, cut layer set. So we've got the lines. It's going to do the grid lines and then it's going to do the fill lines as well. Now, because these are this is a line, but we still just want to engrave it, I'm using the same settings, but what I might do is just um, increase the power just a little bit to give it a, a slight, slightly 
um, deeper burn uh, because it would just be a very fine line that we may not necessarily see. And it's just doing one pass. So using what we've d discovered before, let's have a look at what this might, uh, how we can make this the quickest burn time. Because when I got it, got the file, it was just one file in one group. So I'm just going to ungroup everything and I'm going to group it. Uh, so if we look at that one and we're just going to burn that normally, let's have a look at what that is going to look like. Let's just bring that over and maximize that. It's going to be an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so using what we've learnt before, we know that we can do that a lot quicker. So let's just um, ungroup everything again. And all we're going to do is just, uh, I'm just going to group these numbers together because what it was doing is it's it's all when it's doing the numbers it's got all of this white space in the middle that it's actually not doing anything so we can make that a lot more efficient so we're just going to group these ones together make sure we don't select that line and i'm going to group that one i'm going to group all these numbers together And I'm going to group all of these numbers together. And same thing is we're going to just highlight all of those. And group those together. Now if we go into the fill section and just make sure that we have got that fill groups together. So that's looking at the individual groups now. Let's have a look at what the finish time is. Okay, so it's gone down from an hour 15 minutes down to 17 minutes. So we're saving ourselves all of that time there. And uh, that's part one. I hope you got something out of that one. If you've got any questions, pop them down in the comments. If you didn't quite understand something, how we made something happen. I know that CSV uh, merge variable text is a little bit tricky to understand. But uh, when I first looked at it, but uh, once you understand it, it just makes the whole process a whole lot simpler. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to engrave this file onto a new waste board. And I've also got a couple of other things that I've done to um, ensure that my laser goes back in the same position every time. And that's one to keep an eye out for. And because uh, that's, you know, if we're produ producing this waste board, we want to ensure that it's the, the, the laser is going to be in the same position every time that we use that laser. So we're going to show you how, exactly how to do that one as well. And hopefully you'll tune in for that one. But uh, again, thanks for watching. And until the next video, like I have said in the past, just be creative and stay grateful. Bye for now.